Hi everybody, it's Alex Garris from Skeptico. I want to give you a quick YouTube introduction to this interview that I posted, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And uh, we did a look at the movie. We started this new series, Skeptico at the Movies, where we kind of look at these movies from the perspective of consciousness science, skepticism, spirituality, all the stuff we talk about here on uh, Skeptico. So, um, this was not a super popular one in terms of sharing, but it was fun to uh, talk to. I invited the, my friends from Gramerica and um, Darren and Graham and Red Pill Junkie, and we kind of talked about this movie, uh, Red Lights, which I, in the headline, said, you know, is this the worst movie about parapsychology ever made? Because in some respects it is. It's just really a hack job. And in particular, what they really, really, really hacked was this um, incident or this real life history of where SRI, Stanford Research Institute, did this experiment with Yuri Geller and they prepared this video. You can actually go watch this video of these real scientists who knew what they were doing testing. Uri Geller, and uh, they do a reenactment of that in this movie. And they do it really, they totally twist it around. They're, they're totally the opposite of what it is, but hey, it's a movie, so what do you expect? Anyways, we had fun talking about all this kind of stuff. Thanks to uh, Graham and Darren and RPJ for, uh, for joining me. So check it out. Uh, I hope you enjoy the interview. On this episode of Skeptico. Come on, Margaret, give us a break. You know, it's serious work we're doing up there. We started with scores of 2.1, you know, nothing to write home about, I know. But in the last couple of weeks, we scored 3.4, 4, 4.6. 4. And the chances the difference are down to coincidence is 2 in 100, Margaret. Paul. 2 in 100. She's not impressed. All right. All right. Tom, go ahead and start class without me. Take Two and a hundred, as, an, as if that, any parapsychology uh, researcher would be excited that. about that. I won't be long. So, what is it this time? Psychic photography, retrocognition, remote vision? Telepathy. Drawings, sealed envelopes, cards? Xenocard. Double blind, triple blind, simple, simple blind? Simple blind, I did it myself. I take it from your enthusiasm, you just did a test. Stay with us for Skeptico. Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. I'm your host, Alex Akaris, and on this episode, well, we're going to try a little something new and different. I'm calling it Skeptico at the Movies, and the idea is to look at some modern movies, film, TV shows through the lens of consciousness, science, spirituality, and the, some of the general ideas that we talk a lot about on this show. I think it's going to be fun. I love going to the movies, but I often feel that some of the stuff I find interesting or controversial or even stuff that I don't like about the movies is left unsaid. And I thought here would be the place to say it. So as you'll see, I'm inviting some other folks to join in this dialogue and have a little bit of a roundtable discussion. The first film we've chosen is Red Lights, a 2012 movie starring Sigourney Weaver and Robert De Niro that is right up our alley in terms of parapsychology and in terms of the contorted, twisted view that science seems to have of how skepticism and debunking works and all the rest of that. So a lot of fodder for discussion, and, and I think we had a good time talking about that. I, I hope you enjoy it. If you do, stay tuned. There's a couple of other segments that we recorded on different movies. I'm probably going to publish those in the next couple of days as well. Just kind of get them all out there in, in separate files so you can choose which ones you want to listen to. But anyways, the first one here is Red Lights. Give a listen. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Skeptico, everybody, and welcome to a new special edition of Skeptico at the Movies. It's kind of a new thing I'm trying out here, and we're going to take a look at controversial science and skepticism as it's being portrayed in film and on TV. 
And I'm really glad to be doing this segment. And I was just telling the guys here who I'll introduce you to in a minute that this is really much needed because my wife is sick and freaking tired of me <laughs> going into my rants when we're watching a film and wanting to fill in an hour of backstory while she just wants to get on and watch the plot and watch the film. So it's great to have some folks with me where we can maybe dig into some of this stuff a little bit deeper and talk about how it relates to controversial science and just paranormal stuff in general. And to do that with me, I've invited some folks I want to introduce you to. So let's do some introductions. First, from the very fantastic Grimerica podcast, we have Darren Grimes and Graham Dunlop. Guys, uh, welcome. Glad you're joining me. Hey, thanks for having us, Alex. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It's an honor to be here. One of, you're one of my uh, favorite podcasts. One of my I listen to like yeah, everyone. So. Yeah, that's true. It's one of the originals. Actually, yeah. we we stole a bit of your uh, style for the first couple episodes, and I had my wife reading the uh, the little intro. But is that your wife that reads that? Hell yeah, I gotta get something. You know, she's and then I took her off of it. She, I just took the first clip, you know, and now I replay it every time. And she's like, "Hey, you know what?" What you don't you're not using me for that anymore. I was like, I didn't think you wanted to do that anymore. So <laughs> that's cool. But I, I think uh your guys' show is great. And anyone who hasn't checked out Gramerica, we'll obviously have a link to it here in the show notes. But uh Darren and Graham have done a great job with this show. It's got this fantastic banter, it's fun, but it also is serious in terms of the guests they have are top notch. And they do a great job of interviewing and probing and getting at some hard questions. So I'm a huge Gramerica fan, and it's great to have you guys join me. And the fourth member of this roundtable skeptical at the movies crowd we have is also a freak is also a frequent contributor to Gramerica. He's also a blogger, very well known on the Daily Grail. Sometimes read, I think you do stuff for Mysterious Universe as well. The one and only Joining us from Mexico City, Red Pill Junkie. Red. Hey, que pasa, skeptical listeners? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they're all saying "when, muy buen." <laughs> so uh, good. It's great. It's great to have you as well. And um, I'm anxious to do this show. This is going to be so fun. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Mm -hmm. So here's what I thought we'd do. We are going to take these movies. We've kind of pre-planned these movies, folks, and each one of us has picked out one that we thought had special interest to us. And then we're going to lead a little discussion. We're all going to get in there and talk a little bit about it. And then we'll move on to the next one. And I think I'm going to break these up into separate movies so that we can put them out because I think it's kind of hard to mash four of these together. There may be some that you're not interested in, and then you can kind of pick one that you may want to dig into deeper in this format. So the one that I have selected, we will jump right into. It's called Red Lights. It was released in 2012. You can stream it for free on Netflix if you have Netflix. It stars Sigourney Weaver and another mail-in performance from Robert De Niro. When is this guy going to return to his prior form? On the, this is not in this movie. It's another mail-it-in kind of job that he does. And it is, oh, this is just a classic. This if you're into skeptical, if you're into parapsychology, if you're into psi, this will make your blood boil, this movie. It's about uh, professional, quote-unquote, skeptics at a university, that being uh, Sigourney Weaver and her the little colleague there, who are trying to prove or debunk this world-famous psychic that fills stadiums and you know, has, has these amazing powers played by Robert De Niro, who, of course, is lying about his ability and is faking and is using a little earpiece to get all his information. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Oh, by the way, you know, in terms of spoiler alert here, folks, if you are listening to the show and you haven't seen these movies, uh, you can still, I think, I enjoy it, but it is, we cannot guarantee that we're going to pull back any kind of, uh, protect you from the spoiler alert factor. That's going to be all over this thing. So, I've just kind of told you a little bit about that he isn't really for real, but that is De Niro as he's being played in this movie. So 
That's the film, Red Lights, and I thought we might start with uh, playing a little clip. I'm going to play a little clip for you from the movie. And uh, this is a scene where Sigourney Weaver, who, again, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver is playing the role of this scientist who goes around and is her primary job to debunk all kinds of parapsychology. And she's working at a university where on the floor above her is essentially – the Ryan Research, the Ryan Research Institute. If any of you remember, I mean, the most famous ESP research institute in the world. I mean, that is akin to what is above her. And she keeps running into this little guy who's trying to win her favor by telling her about this fantastic psi experiment that she has and how it's really working this time. And this clip will give you a little feel for that. Let me go ahead and play that. Come on, Margaret, give us a break. Serious work we're doing up there. We started with scores of 2.1, you know, nothing to write home about, I know. But in the last couple of weeks, we scored 3.4, 4, 4.6. 4. And the chances the difference is down to coincidence is 2 in 100, Margaret. Paul. 2 in 100. She's not impressed. All right. All right. Tom, go ahead and start class without me. Take 2 in 100, this, as, in, this, as if that, any parapsychology uh, researcher would be excited that. about that. I won't be long. So, what is it this time? Psychic photography, retrocognition, remote vision, Telepathy. drawings, sealed envelopes, cards, Zenicar. double blind, triple blind, simple, simple blind. Simple blind, I did it myself. I take it from your enthusiasm, you just did a test. That's right. Were you facing your subject? Sure. What about them? Uh, they were in the control booth monitoring the subject. Who was monitoring you? Me. Why would anyone want to be monitoring me? It's a joke. So were you at the same eye level as the subject? Approximately, yes. Under uh, a light, I guess? Yes. The master the debunker. Now? More or less, I guess. You have the cards with you? No, I, I don't have them. Excuse me. Okay. Shoot. What do you mean, shoot? Go ahead. So shoot. she's now going to be a subject in this little sure. ESP experiment. Square. Cross. She's right again. Amazing. She must have ESP. Square. Square. Star. Wave. How are you doing that? Methodological defects. No, no, they're not transparent. We made sure improper of Improper controls. The inadvertent inclusion of relevant data. Or, in this case, all three at the same time. Congratulations. Next time, try taking them off first. And there you go. The debunking of the Zener cards by Sigourney Weaver because the reflection of the light off the parapsychology researcher allowed her to see all the cards. But what I thought was really interesting about this uh, clip is if you go back and look at the original research that uh, Ryan did at the Ryan Research Institute, was, which was really the pioneering work that was done in ESP. It was done at, at, at Duke. It was a offshoot of Duke. Um, they had extraordinary success. They got like, uh, and they were in separate buildings. I mean, the idea you cannot create a simple parapsychology experiment like this, where one person holds up a card and the other person has to guess what that card is, and that you can't do proper blindings. I mean, hell, anyone can go on YouTube and watch videos of kindergartners doing this, where they just put a, a card, a piece of cardboard between them. No fool would try and do this face to face with the other person. And it just, to me, is so hilariously Hollywoodized version of what they think is really going on or what has happened in parapsychology. I found the whole thing just uh, so over the top. I mean, it's like reading right out of Skeptics magazine. And uh, it was just an interesting portrayal of how they did that in the film. D did you guys have a chance to watch uh, Red Lights? What did you think? Yeah, I watched some of it and, and I, I caught the part that you just clipped there and I found it interesting. Like she, it's, she acts like as if there's ever, never any double blind studies or there's never actually real, any real science that it's all fake. And that's what bugged me about it is they make it seem like it's all charlatans and, and, uh, there's not, you know, nothing real going on. Darren? Not entirely. That's what, that's the gist I got from yeah. that. Yeah. There's a twist, but, um, yeah, it's definitely, I, it's tough to say if it's skeptical or if it's just that poorly done. 
you know, like just poorly researched. No, it's 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 got that skeptical bend to it for sure. Is that what you think? You think it's like disinfo skepticism, or it's like trying to get a point across? Or I think it's just a half-assed movie. No, I don't think so. They 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 go out of their way to I think to just to be very debunky. What do you think, Alex? Well, I, I think that's interesting, Darren. I mean, are they trying to kind of? make a point or are they just bungling a movie to get to the end like you were talking about i mean at the end the the twist is here is the ultimate debunker who debunks everything and then her colleague is actually the one who has this uh psychic effect that he is bringing to these experiments so that's supposed to be the big twist in it so in that way i guess you could say the plot demanded that they exaggerate the difference between these uh the skeptics and the believers yeah it's, that's what i so you know it's just like that's why i don't i think it's less you know i don't think it's really meant to be skeptical like i i think but it definitely doesn't portray parapsychology and stuff like that in a very good light well but then again i i think it portrays it pretty consistent with what a large percentage of people believe because certainly, you know, I, in preparing for this, if you just Google, uh, Zener cards, <laughs> what pops up Wikipedia and the first sentence is, you know, this has been discredited. It, the, the, so there was this original work, work by the Ryan research Institute and it was discredited because it showed that there were sensory leakage. I mean, it's right out of the script of this movie. And of course <laughs> it's just completely, complete nonsense. It's crazy. You know, the other thing in the movie, and I won't play the clip because I don't want to go on too long, but later in the movie, one of the things they do is they play this, that, that it's all leading up to this report that they're going to issue. And, um, the report is just, it sounds exactly like the report that you can listen to from SRI, Stanford Research Institute, that they did when they tested Uri Geller. And I just can't think it's an accident at all because they even make it sound like it's, you know, this kind of scratchy, uh, staticky kind of voiceover kind of thing, just like the Stanford Research Report. And yet they have it in this movie. And the point is that they've been duped that these brilliant scientists have been duped by this guy. And, uh, of course that's what James Randi came out with. He said all that work at Stanford research Institute by Yuri Geller, those stupid researchers, Hal put off, uh, the rest of them, they all got duped. And if you dig into that, I mean, it's just exactly the opposite. Randy lied. Randy said the videographer, the guy who filmed it, you know, confessed that it was all a lie. And the guy came out, the guy's name is Pressman. He came out and he said, that's completely ridiculous. I didn't fake any of it. It's all genuine. It's all real. And Randy had to back down a little bit. He said, well, you know, that's, that's what I heard, you know, after he had published the book. So huh. I, I don't know if it's accidental or, you know, if it's poor research, but the, the extent to which it fits perfectly with, this common, you know, meme that's out there about the whole thing of parapsychology. It's done. They never came up with anything. Wow. I just thought it's, it's pretty amazing that, that the extent to which they got it completely backwards is, is almost too hard to accept as being purely chance. Yeah. And you never seem to hear the other side of it where these, uh, these hardcore skeptics are, are, you know, um, being disingenuous. I, I just heard about um, Philip Class, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard he he tried to offer some of the guys um, in the Travis Walton um, account uh -huh. ten thousand dollars, I think, to uh, to say that it was uh, it was a hoax. I mean, and I don't know if that's that's true or not, but uh, it, you know, it's it's interesting how he's this uh, you know number one UFO debunker, paid by apparently paid by. Uh, the government or nefarious uh, groups and, you know, offering, offering people money to, uh, to say things are hoaxes. You know, why, why don't we ever hear about that? So uh, anything else you guys thought from uh, red lights that kind of drew your attention? I like how, uh, I like the end. I like the end when it's kind of when Buddy turns out to have the, because it seems like his powers are limited to like electronics and that, that to me almost 
could come into some sort of realm of possibility, I guess, because that'd be some some sort of electronic or magnetic field control, which I mean, to me, isn't out of the realm of possibility. And I'm pretty skeptical skeptical about that sort of stuff. But you know, I could see like you know how he's able to like blow up the circuit boards and stuff like that. That to me is is definitely within the realm of possibility. Well, I mean, I think it's it's frequently reported these electrical effects but i mean what are you skeptical of when you say you're 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 skeptical of that i mean what what i've heard is the possible explanation and i don't worry about the explanations too much i kind of focus on whether there's a reality to the phenomenon whether it falsifies the crazy skepticism kind of position but what i've heard is that it's not so much it's that it's the preferred method it's just the overlap if you will it's where those two worlds or realms or whatever they are have some kind of overlap is in that electromagnetic field that you're talking about yeah, that's kind of like i think that can almost get into ghosts and things like that too like right. i think there's there's maybe possible ways that it's just kind of like a dimensional slip or something like that i mean some people some people get kind of offended when you start talking like that because you know people want to people want to see or they have seen ghosts of their loved ones and maybe you know maybe that's a possibility too. It's almost like I don't know what was I reading the I was reading something the other day where they're talking about how you, you can almost if you could look into rock somehow and project all the things that's happened around a rock in the past as a video or it was some guy was talking about his wedding ring. He could he could pull images out of it or something like that. You know, that's the problem, I think, with the the paranormal in general. And I think it's why, like in this movie, it, it red lights. I mean, we really want to put it in this laboratory, you know, and we really want to like get to the bottom of this. And in reality, if you really just think it through logically, as soon as you step into that other realm and you open yourself up to that possibility – I mean, all frickin' bets are off, really, right? I mean, whether you can project the history of a rock or whether you had past lives or, I mean, all that stuff just gets so, it's impossible to resolve. It's the famous, you know, how many angels fit on the head of a pin kind of question. That's <laughs> all you have left to answer. And that, I think, is the, the, the appeal of the skeptical materialist kind of worldview is because, hey, let's make it a closed loop system so we can control it, you know, so Sigourney Weaver can debunk everything that has, that smacks of anything paranormal that's outside of the, you know, controlled little reality we have. That's, that's what bothers me about it is, is it's all, it's all so focused on, on debunking uh, fraudulent people. And, and it doesn't seem to take into account like one of the reasons why we started up this podcast or why I wanted to is to talk about, about people's experiences. And, and you've mentioned it a lot on your show too, Alex, where that's what's changing our paradigm right now is people having genuine unexplained experiences and that, that are life changing for them. And whether that can be proved scientifically or not, like who cares? They've had an experience that's changing them and it's happening to, to skeptical people as well. But, um, it's 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 disappointing to me that they would focus so much on the science and debunking and having to prove stuff that it kind of just takes that genuine experience uh, away from it. And it's, that's pretty ironic, right? How science science seems to like it always seems to turn out that science is wrong about fucking everything eventually. End, eventually like if you yeah. look back over the history of fucking everything we always thought or everything we thought we were pretty well sure of. It's just a matter of time till we figure out we were wrong. completely wrong. And then, but, but science still seems to go forward with the same arrogance and, and dogma. And it's just like, you can just see like, but well, we're laughing at what they thought was real 50 years ago. Yeah, I was, I was, that's reminds me, you know, we were talking earlier about kids and stuff and I was reminded that, in the 1950s, the the popular, very uh, well established truth was, you're never supposed to like hug your kid, or or, or oh. God forbid, you know, kiss your kid or show affection like that. Oh, you'll just you know totally screw them up. I mean, and that's just kind of buried in that. It's a soft science, but hey, that's science, right? And I mean, how many 
How many of us are messed up to this day because our parents? I was just gonna, I was just going to say that explains a lot. And now, and now they're finding out that you know actually the studies show that hitting your kid is really bad, and that like touching and loving and all that is is uh, so much more beneficial. Exactly. Okay, maybe we've uh, maybe we've handled uh, red lights enough. Let's wrap it up, and we'll. Uh, what should we do next? Uh, should we give it stars? Should we give it skeptical stars? <laughs> How could we do that? Do we we have to, Darren, folks. If you haven't listened to Gramerica, Darren is is has a unique talent at at rating things. So it's usually synchronicities on Gramerica, but on here. Darren, I'm just going to totally yield to you in terms of uh, how many skeptitrons uh, does does this does this movie get? Four point seven. What? Four point seven. Out of out, wow. of out of ten? No, I'll give it a five point seven. Out of ten? Yeah. Oh, I thought you. Were, I thought it was out of five at first. It was just. Uh, it was good at times, but then at other times it was just tough. The bathroom fight scene gave it an extra half a point. It reminded the bathroom fight scene reminded me of Family Guy where they just won't let go of those fight yeah. scenes and they go on and on and on. You know, Peter's <laughs> fighting the chicken. You know, it's like. Thanks again to the guys at Grimerica, Darren, Graham, Red, for joining me on this inaugural edition of Skeptico at the Movies. I don't know how often we'll get to this, but if you like it, we'll probably do more of these. So let me tee up a very simple question for this movie, Red Lights, and that would be, what did you think of Red Lights, the movie? As usual, the place to share your thoughts is through the Skeptico website at skeptico.com. We'll probably get a nice little forum discussion going about this, or you can just leave a comment there on the website or drop me a note as usual. Of course, as usual, you can visit the Skeptico website to download Almost 300 previous episodes of Skeptico. You know, Skeptico listener reminded me the other day that it's not really 300. I have some very old shows that are missing and a couple that I've taken down for various reasons. But almost 300 shows on every topic imaginable in this general area. So check it out, download them, subscribe, whatever you feel serves you. As I mentioned, I have a couple more of these coming up. So do stay with me for those. And until next time... Take care and bye for now.